so thankful that you're joining us today. The church is just not a building that we come to. Instead, it's a community of people who see the Bible as God's holy word and Jesus as our Savior. We believe that God is worthy of our time, worthy of our affection, and worthy of our energy. That we can't let alone. That we can make a difference in this world. That every person is full of the divine word. That we're in desperate need of grace. But we know that hope also happens here. So let's just not go to the church. Let's be the church. So prepare your hearts and minds. Yes, we are glad to, for you to be here this morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. For those of you here in the congregation and our guests, and welcome to you watching us on Facebook this morning. Just a quick run through of our announcements. There will be a pastor's Bible study after um, our time together in fellowship downstairs for treats and coffee. Um, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. will be our Book of John, a Book of John study. And um, CLC Food Share, there will be no packing Tuesday because we have bags left over from August. So there will be no packing Tuesday, but we need help distributing the bags Thursday, um, the 22nd at 11.30. So food shares from 11.30 to 12.30. Um, I would like for you to remember that the Gideons are coming next week to present they are our September mission of the month. So someone from the Gideons will come to present for us next week. Also, I'd like for you to put on um, your mind as you think about praying today and during the week um, that, that you would pray for those with health needs, like in the back of your bulletin here, um, for, for Judy Stocky, Barb Hansen, Mary Jenny, Mark Melander, Jerry Weida, Carol Johnson, um, who is now living in the cities, Florence Kubiak, the Lund family, uh, Carol Schneeberger, um, Darlene Saff, Carol Schramm, Brian McDonald, Del Sandberg, Carol Sogard, uh, Jane McLean, Maggie Kaptenak, uh, Donna Swanson, Kathy Stevens, Linda Anthony, who is Dick and Lorna's daughter in Florida, and Tom and Marlene Stauber. And also I'd like for you to remember uh, Pastor Yountain's wife, they're actually in, in, in the country now. They're in the city somewhere, or they're, they're um, in Minnesota visiting certain churches. So um, then they'll be going back um, to their ministry to the people of Ukraine. Um, also, like for us to play for our, pray for our local uni gospel mission here in town, and um, our Lutheran vicar, uh, Mabu Ronald, who has two churches in Uganda, St. John's and St. Paul's there. So please keep these, these people and their, their situations um, in your mind, ever present for prayer. Okay. All right. Are there any other announcements? Yes, coffee, treats, and friends. We have a lot of treats downstairs, so nobody leave. Everybody go downstairs because there's lots of good things. And, you know, it's a good thing to, to share them with each other downstairs. Okay, and what's next on the list? Yeah, so let's prepare our hearts and minds once again to enter into worship this morning, the 15th day, uh, 15th Sunday of Pentecost. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, since we can't stand before you relying on anything that we've done, Father, help us trust in your abiding grace, that grace which you poured out upon us, that grace which we feel every day of our lives, that grace which lifts us up when we're down and helps us when, when we're concerned or worried or have doubts. And Father, with that grace, we ask that you help us trust and live according to your word that we would rely upon you and your word for direction, for our sanctification, for living in holiness. And Father, we pray all of this 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. I like to preface our confession and absolution with this, that we enter into confession not as distant strangers with God, but we're friends. The Bible tells us if we're believers in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we are his friends. The enmity has been done away with. That Before we were Christians, we were enemies with God. So we have been reconciled to God by God. So he assures us that we're the objects of his special affection and his love for us. So we're able to be honest with him about our sin because we're loved. And 1 John 4, 18 says, perfect love casts out fear. And so the purpose of our being here today, gathered to worship, we're gathered to praise, to render thanks, to offer up our prayers, and to hear God's word and to receive from the Lord, especially today, from his table. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. For if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. So now Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand with us as you're able as we sing our great Savior. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Oh. 
Jesus, Lord, to me. seated. Before we hear from God's Word, I just want to make sure all of our visitors got a book and a visitor a visitor um, bag, a guest bag. Did everyone get one? Yes. Everyone has one. Okay, super duper. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Amos. Chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will a new moon be over, that we may sell again? And the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the chaff of the wheat, the Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The gradual this morning is from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust, and lifts the needy from the ash heap, to make them sit with princes, and with princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Our New Testament reading this morning is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then, that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. 
For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness of self-control. Please stand with me as you're able, as we ask God to open the eyes of our hearts to hear the gospel this morning. Say, Pastor, it looks like I missed a slide. Did you miss a slide? I think so. So if you open your blue hymnal to 633, you'll see the song, Open Our Eyes, Lord, right, 633. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. He also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I heard about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you are no longer be my manager. You can no longer be my manager. And the manager said to himself, what shall I do? Since my master, master is taking the management away from me, and I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg, I have decided what to do, so that when I'm removed from management, people may receive from me, receive me into their houses. So summoning his Master's debtors, one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill, and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. Hmm. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth. And when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If you then have not been faithful in the unrighteousness, unrighteous wealth, how or who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men. But God knows your hearts. For what, God is exalt for what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Most of you know me. I'm Sue. My name is Sue Deshay. I'm pastor as well. And so I have a special thing to share with you today. It's something I'm working on. It's for the young and the young of heart. It's called the Bible Train, and it's to help us uh, understand some of the key things that we see in the readings every week. 
Okay, so just um, let's go to the, um, it says making connections to reach our destination. So we're going to look at what a train is like. If you could advance a slide for me. Hold the mic so, up closer. Okay, so all aboard the Bible train, powered by God's word and the Holy Spirit. So this is the deal. I'm going to use a train as a metaphor to show how the scriptures are linked together, how they're connected, but they're leading to a destination. Because after all, trains take us to our destination. So our destination at Christ Lutheran Church is to know God and to make him known. You'll notice on the train, you'll see four cars for four readings. Our first car is green. It's got an OT on that. We know what that stands for. Old Testament, right? The purple car is for the Psalms. There's a, a second reading from the book of Psalms. Then the gold car is the New Testament, and the orange car is the gospel. So let's take a look at our first car, the Old Testament. Go to the next slide for me. All right, so our Old Testament reading was from Amos today. Now, in the Old Testament, what you're going to find is mostly history about God, the world, and people, God's law, and the prophets. So that's mostly what you're going to see in the Old Testament. Amos was a prophetic book. And this is a nugget that I pulled out from the reading. So that we remember this especially, it's connected to information from the other readings. God will not forget those who harm the needy and the poor. Hmm. That's a scary thought. God will not forget those that hurt others, especially the needy and the poor. Okay, so let's go on to the second reading, which is from the Psalms. And we call that the gradual, as in you gradually ascend up in worship to the Lord in the book of Psalms, which is a book with songs and poetry that praise God, and they also talk about the struggles and joys of life. That's the book of Psalms. So our psalm was 113. Praise the Lord. This is just a nugget from there. Praise the Lord. He's in heaven, yet he raises up the poor and needy. God is not too far away, though he's in heaven. He draws near to us. He cares about those who are in need. And he remembers, remember from Amos, he remembers those who harm the poor and the needy. Now let's go on to the New Testament reading, the yellow car, or gold car. So in the New Testament, oh, can we go back? No, no, we're good. We're good. I didn't forget anything. Okay, in the New Testament, for the most part, what we see are letters that were sent by the apostles to the new churches that were started. Okay, so these are help those letters help the new churches understand what Jesus has done, what has happened in the gospels, the evidence that we see from those eyewitness testimonies. Okay, just think about getting a letter from God. That's what this is, letters from God that help us understand it better. So in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 15, I drew out this part, which is connected to the theme in the readings. We must pray for all people, even powerful, rich people like kings, because God wants all people to be saved. So let's remember that. We are not, we are not to judge harshly kings and leaders and powerful people as Christians. We are to pray for them, because God wants all people to be saved. So God sees what the powerful do. He doesn't forget it. God cares for the poor and the needy. He's in heaven, but he lifts them up. God wants us to pray for all people, the poor, the rich, the sick, the well, the happy, the sad. All right, and our final reading is from the Gospels. What's in the Gospels? It's eyewitness testimony about Jesus. It's real evidence that he is the Son of God. So Luke 16, 1 through 15, it wraps up saying, God's people should be faithful and wise with money. You cannot serve both God and money. Can you see some of the connections through the readings? One thing to keep in mind is those readings from the lectionary are selected based on the church calendar, but then often you'll see a theme running through those readings. So that's just a help to get you started. And so going forward from time to time, we'll look at the Bible train and see some of those connections for the young and the young at heart. So thank you and bless you in this day. Good morning, everyone. And we want to welcome you as we finish 
our message series, Fact or Friction. So let's run that, let's run that video one more time this morning. Our lives are filled with challenges. And in those times, our perspectives can become clouded. Family members can turn inward and focus on them and on themselves. Marriages are put to the test. Finances can take over our priorities. Faith can become a burden in these moments. What seems to be true might simply be the result of friction in our lives. Only God can clear our vision and guide us through all the stress and struggles. Only God can help us see the differences between fact or friction. We're here to finding help and hope in challenging times. <laughs> so this has been a powerful series and we've discussed how easily our perspectives shift. You can click that one more time. There you go. Our perspectives can shift from what is true to what is false due to friction that can often arise in our lives. Sometimes it shows up in our families, but we're reminded to have the same mindset as Jesus did to humbly respond to those who are closest to us. Sometimes this friction shows up in our marriages, and we can find ourselves thinking the worst of our spouses rather than believing the best. Often friction shows up in our finances as we find ourselves owned by our stuff and driven by worldly things. There's another area of friction that I want to talk with you about today because I believe it has the potential of impacting every other area of our lives that I just spoke of. This particular area is key to having a healthy and glorifying life that honors God and blesses others. Today we want to talk about experiencing friction in our lives. The friction that is most dangerous in our lives is not friction with others, but actually with ourselves. In essence, we must become self-aware. For those of you that have camped this summer or, or have taken vacations with your grandchildren, or just happen to go out on the lake, or you live by the lake, and you have a cabin or whatever, you probably notice that there are two types of boaters out there. And not having a lot of time on the lake this summer, but I've watched videos of boaters on the lake this summer, and you've probably seen these people. The first is the tubing boater. You know, the one who's given responsibility to pull the kids behind the tube all day long in the blazing sun, and he's one of those guys that pulls the tube full of children with his head on a swivel, constantly looking around at his surroundings and being careful to note who's, who's stayed on and attached to the tube and who's been launched into the stratosphere by the last wave he went through as they, you know, crashed into the water. But this guy is incredibly aware, aware of his effect on the ones he's pulling and aware of the weight that he's creating as well. Then there's the other kind of tubing boater guy. This guy is full throttle, face forward. He rarely looks behind to make sure that he's not lost his rider somewhere along the way. You either hang on or you're gone. He's, <laughs> he's oblivious of the damage of his weight that he's, you know, as he speeds through the cove. He's really incredibly and totally unaware just concentrating on how fast he can go and how much he can sling the kids, you know, and hopefully get them off the tube. But you probably know people like this. They don't understand why their marriage is a wreck. They don't understand why their kids don't want them around anymore. They don't understand why their friends say they're always busy. They don't consider how they could be offensive. They're oblivious as to how they live 
and the way they live doesn't align with what they profess with their mouth about their convictions or their beliefs. Do you know someone like this? Well, maybe you'll see that person next time you look in the mirror. The Bible actually has a lot to say about our willingness to become self-aware and deal with our internal friction as a way of growing in our lives for God and our love for others. In fact, Paul addresses this specifically in the book of Romans where he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For through the grace given me, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So Paul says it has a lot to do with God's great mercy. God has been merciful to us, and this should urge us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. Often our friction comes from the struggle between desiring to live for God and to live for ourselves. Paul mentions being a living sacrifice, which is much harder than the regular sacrifices or the temple sacrifices that he was used to. You see, the image here in this passage portrays the sacrificial system where an animal would be killed as an offering to God. Being a living sacrifice is much harder. We have to battle. We feel the friction of wanting to crawl back off of the altar. Living as a sacrifice is, daily, is a daily exercise. And it's not an easy one. We're tempted to conform to the world. We're tempted to give in to living for ourselves. Paul is addressing a pattern in our lives that's unhealthy. And he urges us not to conform to the patterns of the world. The word conform means being pressed into a mold. Since I've grown up and had children and grandchildren, one of the favorite toys for children when they don't eat it is the Play-Doh Fun Factory. You can take Play-Doh and press it into a mold to make a variety of shapes, as many as you want. The Play-Doh conforms to the mold. So conforming to the world is what we must protect ourselves from and ask God to help us and protect us. The friction within ourselves can convince us that we have to look like or be like someone else in order to be accepted. We're tempted to believe that we just need to fit in with people around us so we conform or we become sad and despairing. We let ourselves be pressed into that mold. Or as that we're being pressed into the, that mold, there is conflict and there is resistance, hurt and pain. So that leads me up to my first point. Thank you, Eli. When we live to please the world, we will experience friction. We need to develop new patterns that help us grow in our relationship with God. Reading and studying the Bible is not a pattern of the world, however it transforms us. Prayer is not a pattern of the world, but it makes us more like Jesus. When these are patterns in our lives, we are destined to feel it in our hearts. And others will see that in our lives. Verse 3 of the passage I just read is the key verse in that passage. Paul reminds us that we must be self-aware. We must recognize how our internal life relates to our external life. We fight the friction inside us by taking a sober self-assessment. To do the hard work of wrestling with our hearts, it takes the hard work of introspection. Blaise Pascal, a Christian philosopher and theologian, once said, 
All, all of man's problems stem from his inability to sit in a quiet room alone. How often have you done that recently? This is really true. This leads me up to point number two. Point number two is take time to know your own soul. Take time to know your own soul. We live in a culture that is so stimulated, so overstimulated, so busy. We are so preoccupied that we rarely take time to quiet our souls enough to really know ourselves. For many of us, our busyness, our overstimulation, and our preoccupation are demonic strategies to, to not have to do the hard work of being introspective. You know, I used to drive from the Army base that I was stationed in in Georgia to Florida to visit family while I was in the Army. And it was a six and a half hour drive, and it's a long ways by yourself. And I drive at night, trying to stay awake. So I would drive myself all that way and wrestle with God as He was trying to speak to me about my life. I was always, it was, I was always tempted to turn on the radio or turn on music rather than be quiet and open and be open to God's work in me and his desire to help me to be honest about myself. We have to take the time to open our hearts so that God would reveal to us how to navigate the friction within our lives. Because if we don't, we'll make ourselves sick. In the Bible, we often see examples of how to live uh, that life that's focused on God. Sometimes it's a story or a narrative that helps us. Sometimes it's something an author writes about themselves. The author of Psalm 42 demonstrates this for us, where he says, Why are you in despair, my soul? And why are you restless within me? Wait for God, for I will again praise him for the help of his presence, my God. I love this. And do you hear what he's saying? Why are you in despair, O oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed? So the psalmist is plumbing the depths of his heart because, hey, let's be honest now. Sometimes we get all messed up inside, but we don't know why. We yell at our kids, we kick the cat, we throw something at the dog, fight with our coworkers, feel depressed, get overwhelmed, and we don't know why. Sometimes when we slow down, it becomes apparent. You ever been in a, f a fast car or on a train going fast or landing at the airport or taking off and you look out the window and everything's going really, really fast and, you're, and you try to focus on things with your eyes but your eyes just can't keep up with it. But you can see it when you slow down. Things become clearer when you slow down in that car, when the train slows down, or when the airplane lands and you're slowly going into the airport. It becomes apparent. Truthfully, and this is for real, two plus years of a pandemic and everything that went with it, goes with it, even today, social unrest, a constricted economy, racial disparity, 24-7 toxic news cycles, and social media contribute to our internal state. They have an effect on us. We will never know until we get silent and allow ourselves to become aware of how we're feeling and how we're dealing with this. Instead of allowing that all to pass through our minds like a, like a freight train going by and you can't stop and see what it all is. That leads me up to point number three. Point number three says, let God tell you who you are. 
Each of us always has multiple voices in our heads trying to tell us who we are. Some of these voices are very helpful. The main voice of God should be the most helpful. And many of them are harmful. Temptations, whether it's from school, the workplace, our families, or our culture, we're controlled by them more than we think. What, was, what must we do is what we must do is listen to the voice of God in our lives to help guide us internally. Say, shut up, settle down, everything else except God's voice. His is a voice of peace. His is a voice of love. His is a voice of kindness. His is a voice of hope. Some might say that they don't hear from God, that He does not speak to them. Beloved, the truth is, God has spoken most clearly through His Son, Jesus, the Messiah, through His Word, which we have now in the Bible. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. If you're experiencing friction within yourself, I would recommend turning down the negative voices around you, turning to the voice of God, and dive into His Word. Here are just a few things God says to us and about us. Ephesians says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. First Peter says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 2 Corinthians says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, <laughs> all things have become new. Romans 8, chapter, uh, 8 verse 1, Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. Each one of these verses is the truth from God's Word about who we really are. These truths ease the friction. Maybe you need to put them in your car, on your mirror at home, on your refrigerator, in your wallet, or on your phone's background. This leads me to point number four, which is the reason why this is so important. Point number four. What we believe impacts how we live, and how we live impacts who we are. What we believe impacts how we live and how we live impacts who we are. Friction within ourselves is the key to becoming all that God wants us to, believe, uh, to be. The dysfunction in our lives starts somewhere. It has a beginning. However close or however far in the past it began. It often starts with being unaware of what we believe about ourselves. These beliefs spill over into all the areas of our lives. If you were to look at the traje trajectory of your life, if you were to play things out as you are currently living, where would you end up? Let me say that again. If you were to look at the trajectory of your life, if you were to play things out as you're currently living, where would you 
end up? Where would you end up? If it is not where you think God would want you to be, perhaps you need to begin with what you believe about yourself. What God wants us to all to be aware of is our internal life and to be open for Him to work within us. You know, God's going to work inside you. God is going to transform you either willingly or unwillingly. And I say unwillingly because if we're stubborn, He puts things into our lives that try us and test us to see what our metal is. I remember getting gas in the gas station one time. And I, I don't know, but I can imagine, and maybe it was, this man dressed in Western attire with a cowboy hat and boots walked past me going to his pickup truck just came out of the store at the gas station he said how goes your battle and immediately I knew what he was talking about how goes your battle I said thanks be to God he's with me because I can't engage this battle by myself. You can't. I can't engage this friction going on within myself by myself. I need God. You need God. You need God. And God sent His only Son to deliver us, to heal us, and to save us. To ease the friction in our lives. And to, and to impart unto all of us eternal life. So in conclusion, with, with God's direction and help, you, you can experience freedom from friction, which may come from your families, which may be in your marriages, which may involve your finances, and especially the friction within yourself. God can deliver you, give you direction, and help you. So may the Spirit of God transform every area of your life, and may you honor Him in how you live. Let's pray together. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you are our rock. You are the firm foundation for everything we build. <laughs> but you help us build it. You give gifts to your people for the good of your church. You equip and train your people to carry out the good works you prepared for us in advance. So today, God, we ask that you provide wisdom, guidance, and direction. Everything we need is found in you. Remind us that you are our loving ally, that you are our fortress, that you are our tower of strength, and especially, God, that you rescue us from the friction in our lives. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, please remain seated as we sing Amazing Grace, and that's the medley which uh, <laughs> includes... My chains are gone.
Please stand with me as you're able as we confess our faith through the Nicene Creed this morning. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, life of life, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. Whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let's pray together. The Apostle Paul instructs us, first of all, then, I urge that supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Rejoicing in Christ's salvation offered to all, let us call upon God our Father for ourselves and for all people. Kind Father, your Son declares to us that we cannot serve you and also be devoted to money. Free all your baptized children from obsession with the goods of this world that they may set their hearts on the joys of the kingdom and the inheritance that never fades. Almighty God, you entrust your people the abundant wealth of Christ's salvation in your word and sacraments. Bless pastors that they might be faithful stewards of these mysteries and grant that all your people would make proper use of your means of grace and rejoice in your salvation. Father, God and maker of heaven and earth, you have created man and woman for different offices and with different gifts, that they might com complement one another and glorify you. Grant that in your homes and congregations your people might rejoice in the callings that you have given them. God, our Savior, uphold our president, our governor, our mayor, and all whom you have placed in high positions with wisdom and mercy, that we may, that we may lead peaceable and quiet lives, godly and dignified in every way. Heavenly Father, be with the sick and all those who suffer, those troubled in mind, those grieving in their sorrows, and the dying in their last hours. Grant them comfort, the comfort of your presence, relief according to your will, and peace in their hearts. Gracious God, your Son gave himself as a ransom for all and now gives himself to us that we might have life and salvation. Give us unity and faith and hearts eager for mercy as we receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Now, Almighty Father, you desire all to be saved. Remember your foes who forget your word and call them to repentance and faith, 
that they also would rejoice in your righteousness and salvation. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have forgiven our debt of sin for the sake of Jesus. Preserve us in his grace and life until that day when you gather us to be among the saints in glory around your throne. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer. stand as you're able as we sing our offertory song, We Are an Offer. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, and thus fulfilling your will and gain for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you have created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sins and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit, grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that comes to us in his body and blood. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us to you alone. O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death and the rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Today we are going to ask you to walk forward to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will begin with this side of the room first. You come up, I will give you the bread, one of our deacons will give you the wine, and the young lady will receive the cup from the wine, and then you go back to your seat. Then after they go, this side will go, and then you will go back to your seat after you receive the body and blood of our Lord. Those of you that need to remain in your seat, I think that you were given the little cups. Is that correct? Those that need to remain in their seats that cannot walk forward, um, if that's okay. So we're good to go here. All right. So may I have the the um, uh, worship team and the deacons that are and our helper that are going to help with communion this morning. Just come up here. blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. And I will dismiss you May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve your body and soul from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through this same, in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, that peace which passes all of your understanding. You're going out, you're coming in. You're lying down and you're rising up from this day forth and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our last song, if you would please stand as you're able, is As You Go. May you know the love of Christ. As you go, may you know the love of Christ. Thank you. 
and serve the Lord. Come downstairs and share, share fellowship with one another and good treats. <laughs> 